welcome. I have got the lovely Teresa O'Farrell, who's director of SPA of the Dorchester Collection in Coworth Park with me today. And of course, the wonderful Jean-Guy de Gabriac. Teresa, you're joining us at the World Spa and Wellness Convention, and you're joining a panel on wellness concepts that lead to genuine transformation for both customers and the team. What have you done that has, has done that, has, has led to that transformation? Yeah, well, thank you for inviting me today. Good afternoon to you both. I'm delighted to be here. I mean, well, what a question. I mean, wellness at the moment, everybody, everybody's talking wellness. Well-being is for everybody. So following the lockdown, we all know what's gone on over the last two years. So I'm not going to go back and talk about that too much. But that opportunity after we came back after the lockdown, um, people's focus was there health people you know in many different ways their emotional health um, their mental well-being their physical well-being their social well-being all of those things became much more um, at the forefront of everybody's mind and being part of the spa and wellness we were best placed to actually be able to help those people so prior to opening did all we did all the research I mean I've joined so many webinars the global wellness institute was like my weekly fixed <laughs> to hear what everybody was having to say and actually the opportunity to join all the communities around the world and listen to what's going on in the wellness industry all around the world not just what's happening here in the UK anyway following that we would be re-evaluated we had the opportunity to look at everything to place the guest emotional needs at the center of everything we do which is actually our, our Dorchester collection culture anyway but that became much more prevalent um, with our guests so we looked at um, changing our treatment menu uh, we had we actually had quite a reduced treatment menu when we first opened and um, focusing on treatments for well-being I mean when we first opened we were only offering massage and body treatments because we weren't allowed to do facials at the time so we were really looking at all these touch points with the guests through our treatment um, the whole experience the pre-arrival when they're on site, all the touch points and the opportunity to be able to tailor our needs, the guest, the, the guest needs to what we offer here. So we did that in various ways, but one of the um, opportunities we had here, I mean, Coworth Park, for those of you that know it, it's an amazing property. Uh, we're set in Ascot, um, just around Great Windsor Park. So beautiful, beautiful location. So what we actually have here is the opportunity, not just to be a hotel and spa, to become more of a wellness resort. So taking this in mind, that's exactly what we did. We upped our wellness offering and, we, and our activities that we were able to offer our guests in our beautiful grounds. So we worked with external practitioners. We bought in um, yoga and we did yoga sunset yoga we brought in qigong um, there was a huge interest for that we introduced forest therapy as a treatment and as a, a practice because we've got hundreds of trees here so absolutely ideal for that and we also looked at meditation and and how we could offer that to our guests and everything was so well attended so welcomed by everybody so that kind of set the base for for what we're actually doing now and we are looking at how did you, sorry to butt in how did you you know you, you mentioned responding to your guests emotional needs mm -hmm. um two questions there a how did you find out what their emotional needs were and also how is second and completely unrelated how is it working with those external practitioners is that working well okay so to answer your first question our pre-arrival process is quite extensive here so when a guest books to stay at any of our Dorchester collection hotels the pre-arrival process is to find as much information as we can out about that guest and you can pretty much assume that most travelers now are wellness travelers and they're looking for well-being um, something more than they can current than they currently have at home something additional to offer than what they're doing on a daily basis weekly basis or however they fit it into their schedules so we would ask those questions and in the pre-arrival checks, you know, um, why you come in, um, you know, a lot of the response was we were engaging in conversations, we just can't wait to get out, we've been locked down, um, you know, we need a break. <laughs> um, a lot of people refer to stress, um, people much more openly talk now about their mental well-being. So we were able to focus in on this and then best advise the guests based on what they were telling us. Some people, it was just more social, some of their, their, their well-being was more of a social aspect rather than spa because wellness is far more than spa 
it's the whole you know how do you bring wellness to the whole hotel it's not just the spa and we need to be able to offer it to everybody so so that's what um that's what we aim to do and that a lot of that's done and the information is gathered pre-arrival oh good and no, i interrupted you so that's what and what are your plans moving forward mm -hmm. So taking all this in mind, we are actually now, we have the opportunity. We, the spa at Cowarth Park, it, it's set into the most beautiful setting. It's a purpose-built spa. It's absolutely flooded with daylight. It's a very healthy building. We've got a living roof. And we have the opportunity to create some beautiful outdoor experiences for our guests to enhance their wellness journey further. So we're looking at building in some beautiful wellness facilities. Oh, so you're, you're investing. We're uh, investing. Mm -hmm. And, and in terms of part of the well-being is staff, I think a lot in the industry have reported on you know, getting staff is, is it's been it was an issue prior to the pandemic. It's certainly an issue now. How are you coping and are there any tips for others who have staff challenges? Well, that's where it all starts, isn't it? Workplace wellness. <laughs> So that, that's the key. And that's something that we started um, in the lockdown. We started on Zoom. <laughs> we started that journey with the team. Um, even the whole introduction back into work, we had a three week integrated program to bring everybody back before we opened. And we, we've continued that. We do um, you know, the team's hugely important. You need a healthy team to be able to deliver the wellness services that, that you offer. So even now we've made it part of, you know, with my management team, we make it part of our team meetings. We always talk about wellness and wellbeing. Every time I have a one-to-one -one with the team, I ask them what they are doing to enhance their wellbeing. What's their wellness plan? What are they doing that week? And then we ask how we can support it. It's so important. And, and everybody's been tasked with writing their own wellness plans as well. And we're do everything we can to support them um and and you mentioned obviously bringing in external practitioners and expanding your offering in that sense how have you adapted your core spa offering in terms of the treatments you're providing so with the treatments, I, I mean, my menu before um, the spa treatment menu before we went into lockdown was huge. It was pages and pages and pages. But actually, um, when you actually break that down, what do most guests want? It's the power of touch. So we actually looked at the different type of well-being experiences we were able to offer the guest. In fact, we're launching one next month as well. We've got a brand new sound therapy treatment that we're launching with Ishka. And uh, it's an incredible concept that, you know, what's actually been created. It's not just your average sound therapy treatment. There's been a lot of thought and a lot of planning gone into this to actually produce the right music for the right stage of the treatment, bringing the Outer Hebrides to the countryside of Coward Park. So we've done all this by listening to to what our guests are asking us for. And in your question about the external practitioners, we're very lucky to have some very talented um, practitioners that live locally, but we actually worked with them prior to COVID. So we did used to offer corporate wellness. You know, a lot of our corporate groups would ask for that to be included in, in their sessions here. So we were quite used to working with, with external yoga tutors and things. So that's, main, that's, that's a strength. In terms of the shape of the demand for treatments. You, you said at one point you weren't allowed to offer facial. Are those back? Is the mix back? Are you doing anything differently? How's that also affecting the bottom line in the treatments you're offering? How have you changed that to reflect reality now? So going back to when I think back to when we opened, I mean, the most important thing was to be able to deliver treatments. So we were just grateful that we could be open and we could put our hands onto people and, and to make a difference again. I mean, now it's, it's pretty much back to normal. We still, we do allow a longer turnaround time because I think it's important, A, for the guests to feel that they're at the center and they're, they're the focus and B, for the therapist to be able to have the time to focus on that guest because if they've got four or five treatments a day they need to be able to to deliver an amazing experience to the first guest as well as the last guest so we've we've actually our treatment menu is still quite simple it is more enhanced uh, to to what it was when we first opened but um we've kept it you know everything's back and and it's very well received by the guests and you might not be able to want to answer this but what about the costs of that to the guests has have they gone up 
Um, how have you reflected that? Because your your costs have not gone down. No, no, and and you know that has to reflect in 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 what you're charging. But I do believe that you know guests will pay for a quality service and that's something we deliver we deliver service excellence here so we will expect you know we are known our reputation is for delivering service excellence and our treatments are incredible and we've been able to price that accordingly there has been a price increase you have to it's a business <laughs> you know we we are looking after the well-being of our guests but we've had to incorporate the additional cost because everything's gone up the cost of the laundry the cost of the product the, 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 the resort. and have you had pushback from clients on that not at all not at all and and that that was evident from day one as soon as we opened the doors there was no pushback from guests at all well that's that's good to hear Jean-Guy de Gabriel our co-host on the um world's one wellness convention over to you thank you so very much Mark and, and thank you Teresa for for sharing uh, so much information, being straightforward about numbers and, and what you do, uh, especially because Calworth has now been recognized as the flagship property for wellness for Dorchester. So well done you and well done your team. Uh, I'm thrilled to, um, to welcome you as one of the speakers of the uh, World Spine Wellness Convention in just a few weeks on uh, April 3rd and 4th in London, especially with uh, people joining you. Sushmita Sarangi will be joining straight from Mumbai. She's the commercial director at Taj Hotels. Alejandro Leo will be flying straight from Cancun, is the head of wellness at Habitas Hotel. And Aeson Mutt will probably be taking the tube from Espa Life at Corinthia to join us if she doesn't want to be stuck in traffic. That's how far people are, are ready to, to go. I would like to ask you um, a specific question about something else that is taking a big part of your life because you are one of the board members of the UK Spa Association and you're very committed with the Work for Wellness campaign. Can you tell us more about that? I certainly can. So um, it is one of our big campaigns. It's something I'm very passionate about. So, you know, we're a growing industry, but unfortunately the numbers that we're seeing coming through at base level now, the students that are opting and people that are opting to come into our, our business have been declining. So we're on a mission to, to bring, <laughs> bring people back to the spa. So it's bringing more people to the spa more often. And we're working now with colleges and schools to change the perception of what a career in spa and wellness can be. And I think that's quite important. Unfortunately, the perception can still be quite biased um, for some, um, you know, hospitality, the long hours and low pay, all of it's not true. That's the old days. It's not like that anymore. So, and it's not only that, it's, it's explaining to students the variety of career opportunities once you've qualified. I mean, we all know I love my job as, you know, as director of SPA. There are so many opportunities in this industry, in the UK, around the world, and it's about getting out there and educating students, educating their parents and, and being able to make a difference. And we're going into schools, we're attending careers fairs, also we're attending colleges. I've been into a few colleges recently um, to help students transitioning from leaving college into spa I think that's equally just as important so we're going to be or working very closely with some colleges to actually go in and support them to bring through the future you know wellness practitioners spa and wellness practitioners in the industry that's that's very necessary um that work excellent excellent mm. um any any tips for those um watching now on transforming business any particular things that you any little examples that large or small that you've done at power i think when when you're bringing wellness in everybody is, is able to present wellness in some way it's about understanding your hotel and your environment in every aspect so you need to work out what your goals are you need to work out you know the style of business what's possible what's not possible and you know and make sure that they work operationally and practically as well it's not a one-size-fits-all and this is something we can explore more on the panel but um to me you know having done a lot of research into this area it really is you know when you're going out to introduce wellness into your business understand what what you want to achieve understand what your goals are and then you know on a practical level you know work with the style of hotel and environment you've got and the resources you've got to be able to deliver it well done well done keep it, keep it simple as well yes 
complicated. Teresa, I, I, I'm mindful of the time passing by. It's already 15 minutes, but I, I, without asking you to give too much of a, um, you know, sneak previews or um, how do they say for the for the for the shows um, um, on uh, on Netflix? You know, when you uh, spoilers, no spoilers right now, but. The, the fact that you coming um, as director of SPA from Calworth, uh, being the flagship for Dorchester, but also as the wellness director for the whole Dorchester collection, I'm really looking forward to for, for you to, to share in London a few nuggets also from other properties, not just yours, just a few examples, uh, emotional touch points, uh, wellness activities that they're doing extremely well. It will be great to have your feedback because I know that Alejandro will definitely be speaking about what they do in Mexico, in Saudi Arabia, in Bhutan, in Costa Rica. Um, Shushmita will be, of course, speaking about what they do in India. But Taj is definitely a global company now uh, spanning on different uh, countries and Asen will be talking about what they do specifically in Corinthia at uh, Espa Life but Corinthia is also a European uh, group so there's there's definitely with your panel a lot from around the world because after all it is the world spa and wellness convention back to you Mark I know. and it's such an exciting sorry it's such an exciting opportunity to be there. I mean, we're all in this together. So to, to get a group of people who can share best practices and ideas about wellness for many properties around the world, it's an incredible opportunity to share this. And then everyone can take, you know, workplace wellness and wellness back to their businesses. Here, here. Yeah, I think, I think the opportunity is to both in the conference session, but also quietly those who are perhaps shy of asking questions in front of people. You, it's the great to have your peers, you can quietly tap on the shoulder. Tell me a little bit more about that. So um, ladies and gentlemen, it's the third and fourth of April in London, worldspawellness.com if you wanna find out more. Jean-Guy de Gabriac and of course, Teresa O'Farrell. Thank you very much. See you both in a few weeks time. Thank, pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you, my pleasure, bye-bye. See you All then. The best.